So up to now, we've been talking about all gases behaving the same. And now we're going to talk about the law that governs those gases, and it's called the ideal gas law. So notice an ideal gas is a hypothetical gas that obeys the laws under all conditions. They should have no attraction to one another because all of the intermolecular forces are gone, and all of the collisions should be elastic. That means there is no energy loss. All the energy is transferred, sort of like uh, pool balls hitting one another. We have also said that the molecule's volume is so small compared to the volume of the container that it is negligible. In fact, gases are not all ideal, but we will assume they are all ideal. Here's a picture showing um, a fa the fact that gases are really not all ideal. We'll see that there are attractions between particles, and those attractions between particles will change the amount of pressure that's being exerted on the outside of the wall. Uh, the gas below here is showing greater attraction between particles, and greater attraction between particles will mean less pressure exerted on the wall here. For gases to be ideal, we would see them in a situation where we had either a low pressure situation, where there would be uh, less collisions between one another, or a high temperature where they would be far away from each other. That's where we'll see gases behaving as ideal as possible. Well, in fact, gases are real, and they are attracted to one another. If we look at these three examples, helium's molar volume comes the closest to the molar volume we know at STP of 22.4 liters for one mole. And that's because it's such a small gas, the molecule of, or the atom of helium, that the attraction between one another is practically negligible, leading its way to become ideal. As we get bigger, oxygen's molar volume drops. It drops because now, as a larger molecule, we'll have more attractions to one another, and the volume it'll take up will be less because those molecules are attracted to one another, so you'll see the molar volumes dropped. Chlorine is even bigger, okay? and as it gets bigger, there's more intermolecular forces that are still there, more attraction between the molecules, so you can see the molar volumes dropped again. So we can see the larger the gas molecules are, the more they deviate from ideal behavior. Okay? So regardless, we're going to assume all gases are ideal. And the ideal gas law states that PV is equal to nRT. Well, we're going to understand that we're going to substitute to find this value called R. We're going to do that at STP. And R is going to become the universal gas constant for all gases behaving as they are ideal. Well, remember that pressure at STP is 101.3 kilopascals. Uh, volume for one mole of gas at STP is 22.4 liters. Uh, the number of moles we're speaking about is one mole, because that's the um, uh, volume of one mole of gas is 22.414 liters. And STP was zero degrees Celsius, which is 273K. So if I take the standard conditions at STP, I can solve for this constant called R, and it comes out to be 8.31 kilopascals liters per mole Kelvin. This is called the universal gas constant, and we can use this for any gas because we will assume that all gases are ideal. It becomes useful when we want to find out details about gases. So for example, uh, what volume of steam is produced inside a cake when one gram of water is vaporized at 98 degrees Celsius and 103 kilopascals? Well, I can use the ideal gas law to solve for the volume of steam. I can see, well, my mass is one gram. I'll get myself organized. Um, the temperature is 98 degrees Celsius, which equals 371K. Don't forget, you've got to change that to Calvin. And the pressure is equal to 103 kilopascals. Well, the question's asking for mass. Uh, so I have to get to moles to get to mass. So the ideal gas law equation is VP is equal to nRT. The question is asking for V volume, so that's nRT over P. Well, substituting moles, I'm going to have to find uh, the number of moles, and we're talking about steam, which is water. Molar mass is 18.02 grams per mole. So this is going to get me moles times R which is 8.31 liters 
Okay, I moved this over just so I could fit it in. So we have our moles times our 8.31 kilopascals liters per mole Kelvin times the temperature of 371 Kelvin. Divide all that by the pressure of 103 kilopascals. And I get 1.7 liters, as long as I've done it right. You can see your moles cancel, Kelvin cancel, kilopascals cancel, grams cancel, leaves you with liters. You can also use the ideal gas law to solve for molecular mass. And we have a lab where you have to find the molecular mass of butane in the classroom. But here, given this data of 458 milliliters measured at 30.5 degrees Celsius, 98.95 kilopascals, with a mass of 0.384, what is the molar mass? This is what I solved in class. We're going to use the ideal gas law. Okay. And I know to find molar mass, I have to find moles first. That's the only way to connect up with molar mass. So I substitute VP equals NRT, so number of moles is equal to VP divided by RT. Substitute the values in, and I get a moles of 0 0.0179 moles. Okay, and to solve for mass, I take the, uh, sorry, to solve for molar mass, I take the mass of 0.384 grams, divided by the moles that we found here, and I keep forgetting a zero there. And I get a molar mass of 21.38 grams per mole. So ideal gas law can be used for a multiple of reasons for um, solving for properties of gases.